In the previous video, we learned how to test custom React hooks with the render hook function from React testing library. In this video, let's continue on the topic and test the increment and decrement functions from the use counter hook. I'm going to add a new test. The name is should increment the count. And the second argument is a function. Here we call render hook passing in use counter. It returns an object from which we destructure result. In the next line, we can call result.current.increment with parentheses. And in the next line, we can expect result.current.count to be 1. So we start off with an initial count of 0, call increment and expect the new count to be 1. If I save the file though, we see the test fails. Expected 1 but received 0. If I scroll further up, we have a warning. An update to test component inside a test was not wrapped in act. When testing, code that causes React state updates should be wrapped into ACT. Now what exactly does this mean? To answer that, let me head over to the React docs. I'm here at the testing recipes and ACT function. Let me read aloud what this ACT function is. When writing UI tests, tasks like rendering, user events or data fetching can be considered as units of interaction with the user interface. React DOM slash test utils provides a helper called ACT that makes sure all updates related to these units have been processed and applied to the DOM before you make any assertions. This helps you make your tests run closer to what real users would experience when using your application. The rest of these examples use ACT to make these guarantees. You might find using ACT directly a bit too verbose. To avoid some of the boilerplate, you could use a library like React Testing Library whose helpers are wrapped with ACT. To put it in a sentence, ACT is a function that ensures updates are processed before assertions are made. If I go back to VS Code, it is exactly what React Testing Library is trying to tell us. Hey, typically, I wrap all code that causes state updates in the act function. However, in this particular instance of testing custom hooks, you're directly calling increment, which in turn directly calls a function that causes the state update. And that function is set count. There is just no way for me to wrap this function in act, and I'm going to instead warn you that you haven't done that manually. It may also be the reason your expected and received values do not match as the state updates are not performed before assertions can be made. To fix this issue, we have to import the act function from testing library. Next, we wrap the increment call with act. Convert this into an arrow function and pass it into act. Now, when we save the file, the test passes. Let's quickly write another test to verify if decrement works as expected. Copy paste the test code and change increment to decrement. Expect the count to be minus one. Save the file and all four tests in this file are now passing. To summarize, when testing custom hooks, more specifically code that causes state updates, React testing library cannot wrap them with the act utility function. We have to manually import it and wrap code that causes state updates. For the most part, React testing library wraps every method it exposes within act. Having to manually import and use it is a one-off scenario, but one that you should be familiar with. 
With that, we come to the end of this small section on testing providers and custom hooks. We have learned about the wrapper option to provide context, created a custom render function to wrap all tests with a given provider, learned how to test custom React hooks with render hook, and also learned about the act utility. In the next section, let's learn about mocking when writing tests with React testing library. Thank you for watching. Please do consider subscribing to the channel and I'll see you in the next one.